Hello, and welcome to Bands of Blades. Um, Y'all just saw my cattail walk across the screen. She doesn't want to be on camera, though. She's <laughs> shy. Um, so, yeah. How's everybody doing after uh, a whole week of um, everything? <laughs> Pretty good, actually. Yeah. I'm very, very excited for this game, as usual. <laughs> Awesome. Well, let's start with you then. Uh, Alice, uh, like, tell me, how's your week been? Anything exciting happen? Uh, not super exciting. I uh, had a date last night. That was probably the most ex Not last night, rather. The night before. That's had exciting. Monster Hearts last night. Monster Hearts is real good. Love Monster Hearts. Monster Hearts is my jam. Um, so, yeah. Did, did that bun a bunch. Um... <laughs> That game's an infernal, a hollow, a witch, and a fey. So just, a yeah. That that sounds like sounds like a, yeah. Wow. All right. It's yeah. very very good. Uh, do, uh, er, Eric, did you say wildfire? Is that what I heard? It sound. I said a lot of fire, probably. Uh, right. There there was there were two literal fires last session. Yeah. Uh, the witch set fire to the school, and uh, the infernal set fire to a forest. So, yeah. Yeah, there wasn't some arson in that game, boy. I mean, we would have had a reckoning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that's that's great. Yeah. Very, very good. I Mountain Starts is my most played game, so I'm very happy to be playing it. Awesome. Sweet. Uh, well, then let's move uh, down the line, uh, I guess. Uh, Ginger, how about you? How's your week been? Anything amazing and exciting happen? I'm um, Xmas Ginger Ninja. Uh, this last week, uh, I had my third episode of four. We're doing like a short mini series of Blades in the Dark, uh, and uh, we killed one of the Dimmer Sisters. And we have one episode Ooh. left, so we're just going to go burn their house down, take all their stuff, or take over, <laughs> whichever happens first. Sounds amazing. So that's, exciting. that's that's about it. That and moving, moving in. <laughs> well, that moving is also exciting. Um, great. Well, welcome to your new house, I guess. Or is this your old house still? I don't know what's going on. Uh, renovating everything. So everything uh, got moved to one side of the house. Now I don't know where anything is. <clears throat> that's, that's tough. So. Probably gone forever. Probably. Uh, how about you, Eric? How's your, how, how are you anything exciting things? Uh, yeah, because, uh, hey everybody, I'm Eric. I'm a tabletop streamer, uh, designer, and tabletop show producer. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, am. I can't get enough of role playing games, and so I actually was able to get myself on another show that's starting in a couple of weeks. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, oh my god, I got so excited thinking about a character for it, though. Ugh. It's it's so weird being like someone who's mostly you know always a GM. So like when I finally now get to play a lot, I'm not running all of those games. I'm in like ten games right now. Um, but I can't, I can't do it. Like I, some, some of them aren't streamed. Some of them I'm not producing some of them, you know, no, nah, it's okay. It's really, it's really easy. Cause I can't do as long as I'm not the DM and producing it. Cause when I went, when you go from like five yeah. games of being DM and producer, you can literally do anything. You just, uh, you just, it's like apotheosis level. <laughs> just, like I can manage so many things now, uh, that, that it, you can just stay on top of it all, yeah, but I, was, I love it. I was doing eight games for a while and, uh, yeah. that was, that was quite a bit. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can, yeah super this is super late news but between um last time we played and, and this time i i beat the witcher 3 and then i beat uh hearts of stone the expansion and i loved it nice. uh, i finished reading um the fourth or third book of the Thoffer and gray mouser series and now i'm going back and reading the second one because i don't read them in order uh <laughs> i just read them based on if they're good or not and like good things i've heard about them and let me tell you those are really good books um, they have a lot of problematic stuff in them, but they're also um, aspirational, I think, for me as a, as a GM in a lot of ways, because like Lieber is like aggressive when it comes to like cutting to the action. It's very Blades like in that way. He's like, nope, okay, time goes and we're at this thing now. And oh, while they're walking, this weird thing happens. And it's like, oh, dude, this, like, this is exactly like a game. I can totally see how this gets translated into, you know, it, it, the, why it's so inspirational. So like almost all role playing games. Nice. Uh, it's really cool. So I'm doing that stuff now, and then I'm gonna go back and read. Uh, I'm probably gonna read like Howard again, and go back and read some Conan as well. 
Um, and then I did a previous Twitter post a very long ass time ago um, with asking for other people's uh, inspirations and what books they draw from. And so I have a huge list that I've been compiling as well. So I've just been hoarding all of these book recommendations lately, like a, like a knowledge dragon that I cannot wait to just sleep on and look at them and purvey through. So that's got to be real fun to peruse through all of them. I really Anyways, that's me. the special ability to be able to sleep on a pile of books and like absorb their knowledge. Oh, that'd be awesome. That would be so amazing. But also yeah. uncomfortable. So that's I mean, a cool character idea. Yes. What if yes, you, it does. If you could comprehend books while you sleep would also be a pretty big one. Yeah. And dream it. Yeah. Like you're the character and you dream through it. Yeah. I read a lot of horror novels and like thrillers. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe the last book you touch before you go to bed. <laughs> you just gotta make sure it's the right one. You don't want to accidentally yeah. just suddenly Yeah, no. Okay. Let's go yeah. relive the shining. Mm -hmm. Let's go do that. <laughs> All right. Thinking, she makes it out. It. Spoilers. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, speaking of The Shining, the hotel where they filmed it is literally like an hour or two from me. So, Oh, neat. It's on my list of places to go. That's the perfect segue. Strauss, how are you doing? You uh, seen any weird ancient hotels lately? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not lately, actually. It's, uh, it's wintertime, which means that the town that I'm in is beautiful. But once you start gaining elevation, it turns into a snowy nightmare. So mm. maybe not the best time. But... Yeah. Uh, uh, feel free to swing by and say hi on your way, Xmas Ginger Ninja. We've got cool gamers here if you are if you happen to be in the neighborhood. Um, go ahead. I was going to say, I'll bring you a souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's been a week, uh, which for me usually goes by in the blink of an eye. Uh, Man, I heard there was something really exciting that you announced on, on Twitter earlier this week. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, what that was. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> me and John LaBeouf Little are Off Guard Games, um, and Off Guard Games produces a lot of cool things like Band of Blaze, which you'll be seeing, uh, but our big product that's been out so far is Scam and Villainy, which is space opera Blades in the Dark, kind of like Firefly, Cowboy Bebop-ish, um, and it... Uh, it got picked up by Evil Hat, so they'll be actually producing the physical copy and assuming that all the stars align, we're shooting for uh, being their big release at Gen Con. So there's obviously things that can go sideways with printing and all sorts of other stuff, but uh, uh, that's that's roughly where that's roughly where we're at. So Super uh, yeah. exciting. Um, I'll be sharing some roughs and art pieces and discussions on the whole process of getting this thing out the door so uh if you follow me on the twitters that's probably the best place to see this stuff which you all should definitely yep so uh that and band of blades is pretty much consuming all of my free time which has got editors comments back so we have fourteen thousand of them to go through so it's you know how you do that's a lot so, yep that's me great well awesome well, then I guess we're ready to play some uh, Band of Blades because I didn't do anything exciting over the last week. <laughs> uh, so in Band of Blades, uh, if we had a lore keeper, I would say, lore keeper, what happened last time? But we don't. <laughs> so uh, does anybody want to help me out and uh, just recap and maybe like a couple sentences what happened last time so that everybody who maybe didn't see the episode or didn't catch the end of it could uh, so, potentially get caught up? If I remember correctly... Uh, our task was to blow up a bridge so that we weren't overwhelmed by undead forces, um, and in which which we succeeded in doing. Um, and honestly, most of us, there were a lot of t tense moments where people should have died and didn't, and it was crazy. Um, probably more sixes and crits I've ever seen rolled in a Blades game, actually. Um, but yeah, so we ended up actually succeeding blowing the bridge thanks to our scout who like did a bunch of traversing down underneath it and stuff with alchemicals and all that. Um, I we a giant monstrosity with multiple faces and undead riding its back showed up, which we were not able to kill. Uh, so that's that's a thing. It wasn't yeah. the mission. You didn't have to. It wasn't, it wasn't the mission. That was the um, bonus mission. <laughs> Uh, if I remember correctly, everyone escaped except my heavy, who escaped by jumping off of the bridge and then just walking up to camp later. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, it was, it was all very, very good stuff. Oh, and uh, Alana killed Red Hook. That's a thing. She just showed up with Red Hook's head. Yeah, that's how Alana do. <laughs> all right, cool. So, um, I failed as a GM last time. 
uh, which I've made a note to fix my sheets so that I remind myself correctly so that we don't do this again. But uh, when the quartermaster does downtime actions, one of the things that we should do is uh, we should roll for spy stuff. And I believe that our whisper, which is Jinja, uh, has two spies uh, that you have actually tasked with training new spies. So do you want to give a toss of the old bones for, for, uh, for those guys? Yes, I'm just opening my sheet real quick because I took notes. I don't know why I don't see their names on my sheet. Hold on a sec. Uh, I know I sent both of them to uh, be trained. Mm-hmm. So what, how many dice is she rolling for that? Uh, well, one will we'll have two dice. I'm double checking if one of them is just good at training, though. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was... Yeah. One's a master. And another one, yeah. Unfortunately, I have notes on just about everything except that here. All right, so I got it. I got it. I got it. Awesome. So, I'm gonna butcher these names again, probably okay. every time. It's totally okay. Uh, Onyatin mm-hmm. is uh, uh, he's a master. Roll 2D when trying to accomplish a mission rather than one. And then Antoinette. Uh, if I recall, Antoinette is actually good at training spies, Recruit right? Training. Yep. Uh, so I sent them both out to train. So what am I rolling? So 2D6 for the first, for the master spy, right? Uh, yes. Uh, if he doesn't get extra bonuses for training additional spies, then yeah, you just roll 2D6 and we'll adjust the clocks accordingly. Ooh. All right, so we got that. And then I'm rolling plus one segment per roll. So I'm rolling 2d6 plus an extra segment. You got it. Okay. So she will always, uh, let me double check. They are recruit and train new spies is an eight clock. Yep. Okay. All right, so you got a six for the first one, which is three segments, and you got a four for the second one, which is two would be two segments, except that Antoinette is really good at her job, so that is three segments as well. Awesome. So I will, uh, I will set you up. Two, three, and one, two, three. Ta-da. All right. Uh, can you see it like on the mm-hmm. on the main page with the map? Uh, you can see that I keep your little spies clocks on the right. Okay. Uh, so you can see that they have both achieved three segments. Now, do you know ahead of time which spies you happen to be uh, looking at? No, I can look and uh, send you a message in it's, a minute. Yeah. It's totally not a big deal. Um, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, sweet. All right, so uh, I'm gonna tell you a thing. Um, This is a thing, so now is the part of the game uh, where I have to uh, tell you guys what the the available missions are. Commander has chosen uh, scouting as her priority, and so uh, I rolled up the the missions randomly, and you got two scouting missions and one uh, assault mission. So let me tell you a little bit about each mission. And the first mission comes to you actually via your spy network. Um, so one of the things that happens is um, you're going to have Antoinette return to the Whisper, and one of the things that she mentions is that they've been training um, infiltration, and so she mentions that one of the things that they do is they they have been just crossing the enemy lines, not doing anything too aggressive, not trying to get into much trouble, but just like taking a peek to see what's happening on the other side and returning, and that's like an exercise that they've been doing. And one of the things that she tells you is that uh, she's seen marks uh, that have been left in the terrain, like um, which is basically like spy shorthand that they hide in very common objects like lampposts and stuff. Um, and she tells you uh, that she's got data that tells you that, that tells her that there is a spy still in a city past enemy lines um, who's who's trapped there. 
And so uh, the first mission that you hear about is actually, a, uh, it's an exfiltration, which means that you go in, you grab a person, you get them out, right? So it's a, uh, there's a spy in Carlsberg who's been trapped there. And um, he apparently has valuable information, but he can't get out on his own. And so uh, your, your mission is to go in, um, recover the info and get out. Um, and this will provide time and intel. And uh, what this means is that the commander will get one intel and also your clock will tick backwards by one. Um, and if you do not do it, then there is a chance that the undead will deploy certain weapons you may not anticipate and the legion at the base will be hard hit. So you'll probably lose some people. Okay. Um, the second mission that you guys hear about is uh, <clears throat> there is apparently a local resistance. Um, and one of the things that the Legion is trying to figure out is how to get out of this place. So uh, the routes to the north are slowly being cut off. Blighter is moving her troops, starting to monitor the paths, trying to lock down the main roads and other things like that, which means that instead of just making a mad dash for Plainsworth, the Legion is going to have to probably fight its way through and it's going to be extra hard. This is manifested in the rule for the Western Front, which is that you roll with an additional die when you roll pressure when you advance. But there is a local resistance that has been fighting them that has paths that are not known to the undead. And you folks have not linked up with them, so you can't like talk to them regularly, but your scouts have reported that one unit of theirs is in a town pinned down by Blighter's forces. And if you can rescue them, you might be able to convince them to give up uh, their paths and that will uh, give you an easier way through. So um, the... Uh, uh, this is actually the assault mission and it grants three morale and also um, decreases pressure. Um, and the, the penalty of course is more pressure because if they get destroyed then their paths disappear and the undead control of the world. So you guys are gonna have more pressure on you. Uh, and the final mission is, um, so it's been mentioned that there is some sort of powerful undead that is monitoring the area and like guiding the actions of the undead in the in the local sort of like theater of war and the scouts report that there is a specific undead called the doctor it is one of uh blighter's minions um it's like you, you remember the plague doctor looking fellows that you encountered on the bridge well, this is one of those, but is apparently still intelligent and is responsible for sewing together and inventing all of the like horrible monstrosities that you folks are seeing. And apparently um, it's set up a lab somewhere in a town and there is something being brewed there. And so uh, the objective is to go in and destroy the lab. If you happen to find him, if you happen to end him, great. But the objective is to go and find out what he's doing and destroy the lab. So, um, those are, uh, oh, and that mission, let me see here. You mean there's no chance what he's making is the most adorable um, butterflies to bring happiness to the world? Um, it's just hundreds of cute little chance. rabbits sewn together. Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate pet. <laughs> uh, no, so he, not, no yes. that, okay. Uh, that is the last mission. One second, let me see what the... We could go find out. If I remember, that was the, uh, that was the assault mission and the other one was a scout or... Nope, that's a scout oh. mission. Oh shit! Interesting. Okay. Yep. Uh, so what you would find is uh, what you would find is intel actually in the lab as to what Blighter is planning. Okay. Uh, so be two intel, I believe. One second. Yep, it would be two intel. Okay. So I believe with that information, she would bring it to uh, the commander and the rest of the group. What's and, the penalty on that mission? Uh, the penalty on that uh, the penalty on that mission is pressure and time. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I uh, so uh, to peel the veil a little bit, uh, I was I'm the commander, so I was told about the missions a little bit ahead of time. Although, if I remember correctly, that one was hmm. That might be priority now, though, because that one's those those penalties are much worse than than the other ones. And honestly, two two intel is better than the other reward. I'm leaning towards making that one priority, the first one secondary, and ignoring the assault mission because we can that, take. 
You think that time and intel is worse than two int uh, is worse than two intel? That's interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm. I was kind of thinking that. I, I I'm, I'm only leaning towards the second one because if we can slow them down and find these routes, it might be more useful in the future than this one-time penalty that may build up and be a major right. issue later. So right. Sure, but here's the thing: mm -hmm. the reward we get for that is three morale. That's we are currently at 10 morale. The only way that becomes useful is if we end up having deaths, which is possible, but it's just, it's, it's a buffer. <laughs> Don't forget who your officer is. This we is did. Fair, but, <laughs> we did it, but I'm just saying, it's not like a, we need intel is a, is a big thing. Like right. we, we, get, we, we need <clears throat> intel. Um, the first I, one gives one intel and one training, right? Is that uh, it? It gives part? one intel and reduces time, and you'll also get a spy. That's, That's the spy spies. locked down in. Um, and there's a city nearby or a town nearby. That's mm -hmm. the thing. It's a very big town. Yeah. That's. Oh, it's a big town. Pretty good. Okay. How yeah. do we find out? And how do we know if this was good? Did we learn this because of our spy network? Yeah, because okay. of our spy network right. and yeah. markings that they put. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's fucking awesome. I think uh, that one might be cool. Just oh, we're having another spy, then we'll have we're gonna have a whole network by the time this is over. We that should definitely amazing. send we should definitely send people to get that. Okay. Yeah, that means that's what I'm saying. Uh and then the one that I really think we don't need is destroying the lab. Fictionally, uh, like it won't fictionally, come back I think yes later. It's fine. No. Yeah, I know. That's the thing, right? <laughs> fictionally, it's much, much worse than the other ones, actually. Have you well, guys played Wolfenstein? That's what's in my head right now, is those terrible, horrible, like uh so it's it's fictionally it's worse. Plus, again, we don't need the we don't currently need the reward from the assault mission. Although the the penalty is not good for us, but uh, I'm I'm we I'm leading more now to making the first one a priority, but still but and making the second and making the third mission rather our secondary mission. But I'm I'm still leaning pretty heavily towards ignoring the the assault mission. One more time, the assault mission is the destroying the lab, right? No, no. that's a scout mission. It was the second one to go help the people and get the routes. Get the routes. Oh, the so rebels. Whatever, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I, I listed them wrong in chat in terms of I their like the numbers, routes, but I got I got the three of them. I feel like the okay. routes is like a really important one. I agree. Important. I think we should ignore the lab personally. Important. Yeah, Commander makes the final say, though. So what do we do? It's Routes are important, but also it's yeah. I'm I'm gonna stick to my guns. I'm gonna say primary to the one that gets a spy, secondary to the other scout, and we'll just we'll risk the the morale hit. Okay. So uh, I, I will I will add one thing. Just remember that Liberties recovers a little bit of morale, and you can always do an assault mission afterwards if your morale was too low to try and recover it. Yep. Um, okay. Cool. So. Uh, one of the things as the GM that I have to do is I have to fictionally push forward consequences. So mm -hmm. um, regardless of which missions you use, there will always be consequences to not choosing the other ones. It's never scot-free, yeah. right? Um, but I guess uh, I guess we're going to go into the first mission, which is uh, the spy mission, from what I understand. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, we begin, as always, by saying, who's going on the mission, Marshall? Right. This is a scouting mission, just so you are aware. All right. And now for everyone else who might be interested in this game and, and, and it's coming out, when you're designing and putting four characters for a mission here, um, do you get an advantage for putting some specialists on, on the non-player mission? Uh, yes, because... Uh, so there's a couple of things to note. Um, uh, every specialist that goes on the NPC mission gets one XP to put wherever they want. Okay. And also... Um, for example, if your officer goes on the secondary mission and people die, their ability will trigger. So right. aside from that, not really, uh, but you assemble your um, engagement pool based on which specialists are sent. And right. I can tell you that scouting missions require a sniper or scout in order to get a bonus die on their engagement. So right. if you do not have a sniper or a scout on the on the uh, scouting mission, you're going to be at minus one D for your engagement roll, which is rough. Yeah, I know. Okay, cool. Um, so I think I think for our NPC mission, and one more time, the NPC mission is going after the the, the rebel, lab, or, or not the lab lab, the lab lab. Yeah, 
right. Um, yeah, going after the um, going after the lab. Um, I think we're gonna send our scout and our medic on that on that mission to get some experience. Wow, I didn't I didn't see that. Then leaving our. Medic, I thought the medic was going on the primary. Uh, I was thinking about it, but like. I'd rather have our our sniper I'm and our heavy. I'm kind of surprised that the uh, the officer isn't going on the side mission to get all that sweet sweet somebody's. Gonna yeah, you know what? Fuck it. You're right. You're right. Right. And the medic medic's coming I with us. Med medic officer so, minus minus medic plus officer for that Got roster. It. Okay. Oh, and then um, I need to come up with and, I, and let me see my rookies and see which ones I want to send over on it. Uh, I got Albra, Neen, Verdant, and Jenny. Um. Uh, it, you can just say I'm sending X squad, and we'll we'll handle them when we get there. It's not okay. super relevant that we go right now, but we can. Oh, okay. Oh, we red red flying lotus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's vulture squad, and you apparently yeah. have also decided that you have something called crow squad, which we haven't fleshed out, but we'll do it probably yeah. when we get to the secondary mission. I'll like during the first break. I'll just make some rookie sheets, and you can name them. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah. Then let's just not worry about it, and then we're. The rest of them are going to be filled in with NPCs. Cool. Uh, uh, so which squad okay. are you sending? Like, primary mission. Are you sending Vulture uh, Squad on primary mission? Uh, yeah. So that would be one more. All right. In your notes, who's who's Vulture Squad? Just uh, just so Red just so we make Lotus, sure. Red Flying Lotus, Zenny, Verdant, Neen, and Albra. And there is okay. there is a squad called Crow Squad, but it it currently has no names, and it won't until it goes on its first mission. Okay. If you go to the player sheets where you see all of ours, it's that top part. I just noticed yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> Inches on top okay. of her game. All right. So yeah. So so one squad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a standard all mission right. loadout. So one of the premises of the game is that you folks, are, like the base camp, the thing that you you uh, set up where the majority of the legion is located, is regularly probed by the undead. Like they will show up and they will attack. So. <laughs> Uh, your chosen and the remainder of the people at camp are actually defending it constantly from, from onslaughts. This is not like 24-7. It's not like you have to hack your way out every day. But in the time that you go for a day and return, there's probably been at least one probing assault or two. So they cannot spare like three squads to go out because then the defense perimeter will crumble and people get attacked yeah. and mauled. So what you folks uh, get to take on a mission, unless otherwise noted, is one squad and two specialists. Um, and this is mostly for everybody watching so that everyone's clear. Yeah, that's good. So, okay. Primary mission, uh, you're sending... Which squad are you sending? Vulture squad, I assume? Yeah, because we already... I mean, okay, yeah. So, and what two specialists? For our primary mission? Mm -hmm. um, what type of mission was this mission? Scout. Also scout. Oh, Meaning okay, we need okay. a sniper or a scout. So... I you said, already spent, sent the scout. I sent our scout, so, so obviously sniper. our sniper, our sniper for sure is coming. Um, and our... I mean, my gut, my gut wants to say medic, but... Um, if there is a spy who is in trouble in the city, there is a higher than average chance that they are injured, and that's part of why they can't get out. Right. Okay, then yeah, but no, definitely. It depends, that's... it depends on why, like the why they're entrenched there. If there's if, if they're like surrounded by undead and just can't get out due to pressure, yeah. then you want a heavy with a bulldozer. Yeah, uh, <laughs> be aware that if you go on a scouting mission and heavy load, you um, you take a penalty. Also... Right. Okay. Uh, it, it it is possible yeah. in our yeah. other mission. We definitely had a heavy heavy go. I just had to wear light armor. So uh, I'll point out I my my whole heavies. Jam is they took mule and and huge, so my he my medium load is like seven. Yeah, it's a so, normal person's heavy load. Yeah, or whatever. Um, no, eight rather. Sorry. Let's do no. I think I think we're gonna do. Your normal, um, but your your normal load is more than most people's heavy load. Great. Yes. So we're sending we're sending our medic who we haven't seen yet, Green Glowing Thunder, and uh, we're gonna send our sniper, Gray Fading Wake. We're sending we're sending our our Panyar on this on this mission. All right. Final Ooh. final say. Uh, who's flying those two? Uh, actually, you you folks all decide amongst yeah. yourselves. Yeah, I don't think I, I decide mean, that. Uh, uh, GJ, I would love to play a rookie. You're the one that made the sniper, so you first dibs, I would say. Yeah, I'd like to play her if that's okay with everybody. Sweet. Yeah. 
Sounds Just good to me. It. Uh, uh, Eric, you made the doctor since you're the the marshal, but you said you would prefer to play a rookie. So yeah, uh, I I play either one. Um, I enjoyed playing a rookie when I played before, um, but it would be cool to try out a doctor. I don't know if Alice has a preference. Uh, no specific preference there. Yeah. Um, uh, what ability did your medic take? Because I don't see it on the sheet. Uh, actually, I don't think I gave him one yet. Oh, you um, I just, I just gave him, I just gave him stats. Because uh, um, I know they weren't going on this one mission, so I didn't actually yeah. get them. Uh, so I, I'm not gonna lie, I pretty much just like quickly made him like insight or or them uh, insight based, and I was definitely thinking about Croker as far as things go. Uh, so probably, probably like I just imagine someone more intelligent, um, good at scouting and healing people 